fiery horse with a speed of light, a cloud of dust, and a hearty Hyo Silver, the Lone Ranger. With his faithful Indian companion, Toto, the daring and resourceful masked rider of the plains led the fight for law and order in the early western United States. Nowhere in the pages of history can one find a greater champion of justice. Return with us now to those thrilling days of yesteryear. From out of the past come the thundering hoofbeats of the great horse, Silver. The Lone Ranger rides again. Come on, Silver. Let's go, big fellow. I'll Silver. Hi! When old man Freeman died, his Bar T ranch was in a rundown condition, and it remained so for three years while the courts tried to locate his one and only heir to the property. Meanwhile, Clay Bixby and his gang of outlaws found the Bar T an ideal base for their operations. They set up headquarters in a line rider's dugout a few miles from the ramshackle ranch buildings. Then one night, one of Bixby's guards posted outside the dugout called down to him. Hey, Clay. Yeah, Pete, what is it? Somebody's riding in here. They're sure pushing leather. Uh, it must be Fuzzy Foster. I sent him to town. You better come see if it is. Go on with the game, boys. I'll find out. Right. Ho, ho, man, ho! Yeah, that's Fuzzy. What's the rush, Fuzzy? I've got news, and it's bad. Come on in. Let's hear about it. Yeah, what's it all about, Fuzzy? All right, quiet down, you hombres. Fuzzy's got something on his mind. All right, Fuzzy, what is it? They, they found old man Freeman's kinfolks. What? How do you know? I heard it in town. I rode by the ranch house to make sure. You mean his kin's moved in already? Lock, stock, and barrel. As I rode up to the place, I could see a couple of lamps burning. So I dismounted and snuck up to the house. What'd you see? A young fella, maybe 30 or so, and his wife. They were eating supper. That's so? What'd you hear about him in town? Well, not much more than we already know. His name is Walt Freeman, and he comes from back east somewhere. He, he sure looks like a tenderfoot, too. Hey, that puts a crimp in our fence wire, don't it, Cleet? Yeah, I think we can take care of him. Get me a pencil and paper. I got a pencil here. Here's a scrap of paper. All right, now move over there. Let me sit down at the table. I'm aiming to write him a little note. And when I get done, Fuzzy, you and Pete can ride over and deliver it. Meanwhile, Walt Freeman and his wife Stella had just finished supper. Their first in their new home in the West. Stella got up and began clearing away the dishes. I'll help you with the dishes, Stella. I won't have it, Walt. I'll wash them myself. You just sit there and enjoy your pipe. All right. When they're washed, I'll dry. Isn't it wonderful, Walt, having a home of our own for the first time in our lives? Ah, uh, sure is, Stella. Even though the place is run down mighty bad. But I can fix it up. I wonder what kind of neighbors we have. Oh, good and bad, I reckon. Just like any other place. I suppose when they learn we've moved in, they'll call on us. Most likely. I, I hope they take a liking to us. I've heard that Western folks are quite friendly. Judge we met today was mighty pleasant. The rest are like him, and we've nothing to complain about. Listen. 
Sounds like somebody passing on horseback. Yes, must be some neighbor. I'm glad I've got the dishes off the table in case they stop. Well, they're stopping, all right. You better take the lamp to the door, Walt, so they can see their way in. Yes, I will. <laughs> what was that? Huh? I don't know. Sounded like something hit the door. Why, they're riding away. That's strange. I'll take the lamp. You go to the door, Walt. See what hit the door. Yeah. Well, I'll be... What is it, Walt? A dagger stuck in the door. There's a piece of paper on it. There. Let's see it. Looks like a note. Hold it here by the lamp. Uh, this is a warning. Get out and stay out. It's signed, a neighbor. Well, if that's the kind of neighbors we've got, I don't think much of them. This is terrible, Walt. What will we do? I'm taking this knife and note to the sheriff the first thing in the morning. I'm going with you. You don't have to go, Stella. I'll attend to it. Why, I wouldn't stay here by myself. I'd be scared to death. Very well, you can go along. But I don't scare easy. Nobody's going to run us out of our home. For several days, the Lone Ranger and Tonto had been camped a few miles out of the town of Prestonville, trying to learn the identity of thieves who had been preying on ranchers, stagecoaches, and others. The masked man had sent Tonto into town to pick up such information as he could. On this night, when Tonto rode in... Oh, Scott, oh, fella, oh, fella, easy, Scott. Well, that is unusual, Tonto. I was beginning to worry about you. Oh, me learn much. Me see much, Kimasabe. What did you learn? Well, you know old ranch. It's called Bar T. Yes, it's been abandoned since the owner died. Isn't that right? Well, tonight, me ride from town, take shortcut. Me see light and window ranch house. Me go close to house to see who inside. Think maybe bandits there. Yes. And then me hear horses. Them come fast. Me hide behind old barn and listen. Horsemen ride up and stop. Then ride off fast. They didn't dismount and go in? No. Them stop just a little bit. Then ride off. Me look. See door of ranch house open. Man, woman come to door. Man pull something from door. Pull something from the door? I don't understand. Well, me hear man say it dagger. A dagger? Not right. Me go close to house and look through window. Man, woman, look at paper. Could you hear what they said? Ah. Them read note before me get to window. Me hear man say, him take knife, note to sheriff tomorrow. Woman say, she go too. She afraid. Then it's evident the man and woman aren't lawbreakers. They wouldn't be going to the sheriff if they were. Well, that's right. Them look like good people. I'd certainly like to know who threw the knife in the door and why. If me know them throw knife, me follow them. But me not know about knife until man, woman, open door. It's too late then. Men ride off in dark. Yes, I understand that, Tonto. Well, tomorrow we ride over that way. We may be able to pick up the trail of those men. It's not far from here now, Kimasabi. Yes, as I recall, the place is just over the ridge there. Why we wait until sun high before we go there? Much better to pick up trail when dew on ground. Yes, I know that. But I want to look around the place while the new tenants are gone. They wouldn't understand. Oh, that right. Now look, Tonto. See that smoke? Ah, come from the direction of the ranch house. We'll see what it is when we get to the top of the ridge. Come on, Silver. Get him up, Scout. Smoke get plenty big now. We'll be able to see better in a moment. Oh, Silver. Oh, 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 oh. oh, Barn's burning. And wind blow toward house. It burns soon. We may be able to stop that. Let's go, Tonto. Come on, Silver. Get up, Scout. As the Lone Ranger and Tonto raced toward the burning outbuildings of the Bar T home spread, Clayt Bixby and Fuzzy Foster were pressing their mounts through a draw to the north. Clayt was in a jovial mood. <laughs> I figured the newcomers would head for town after they got that dagger and note. You sure figured right, Clayt. I was sitting across the street from the sheriff's office when they rode up and hitched. Then they went inside. You didn't lose any time getting back to tell me, Fuzzy. I wonder if the ranch house has caught fire yet. Yeah, we'll be able to see when we get out of the draw. Get up here. Come get on. up there. Coming out of the draw now. Let's take a look. Oh, 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 oh. Uh, it's not caught yet. I hope the wind hasn't shifted. It hasn't. Give it time. <laughs> we 
When that fire gets through, about all a sheriff can do is put the ground up for public sale. And you will buy it? If the price is right. And I think it will be. <laughs> hey, see them two men riding in there? Yeah. Where'd they come from all of a sudden? I wasn't watching. Now, what are they up to? They're uncalling their ropes. Yeah, that's what they're doing. What for? They're going to drag the gear house and them branding chutes out of the way. And if they do, nothing but the barn will burn. That's exactly what they're doing. Look at them horses pull. There goes the gear house. Hey, Clayt, isn't that big fellow on the white horse wearing a mask? Yeah, I thought so too, but I'm not sure. Smoke's too thick around him. But I'm going to find out. You mean you're going to ride back there in broad daylight? We'll keep the cover. And Fuzzy. Yeah? If you're as good a shot as you claim to be, you're going to have a chance to prove it. How do you mean? We're going to drill those men who are aiming to save the ranch house. Come on. Hey, wait a minute. Come on. We're going after them. Get up. Come on. Get up. Come on. Sheriff, it's mighty kind of you to ride out here with Walt and me. It sure is, Sheriff. Well, I want to take a look around. I might be able to pick up the trail of them two who tossed the knife into your door last night. Early this morning before Walt and I left, we saw horse tracks in the dust. But the dew was on the ground then. It'd be hard to follow now the sun's dried them out. I'm glad you don't think it was any of our neighbors, Sheriff. Uh, Mrs. Freeman, you've got the best neighbors in the world. Good church-going, God-fearing folks, that's what they are. And who would want to run us out? I can't answer that one, Mr. Freeman. That's why I come along with you and your missus. Look, Walt, the ranch. It's on fire. Oh, I'll be a salamander. It's going up in smoke, sure as shoot. Somebody set it afire while we were in town. It's the only home we could call our own. Oh, Let me off this buckboard. Let me get on my horse. All right, ho, ho, ho down. I'll ride on ahead. Now, quiet, honey, quiet. Everything's going to be all right. I'll stay there, Pito. <laughs> You follow me, Freeman. Right. Get up. Get up. Come on, get up. Get up. Clayt Bixby and Fuzzy Foster had no difficulty in approaching the home spread of the Bar T, but they drew up under cover some distance from the burning barn. Oh, oh, oh there, whoa, whoa, whoa. We'll go in on foot from here. Yes. <laughs> Just leave the horses at ground, Hitch. Keep down low. They might get a look at us through the smoke. All I ask is to get within a hundred yards of them, and I'll drop them. Smoke or no smoke. You'll have your chance. You'd better not miss. Hey, hold on there, Fuzzy. What's the matter? Look who's riding in. Uh, the sheriff. Yeah, it's him, all right. This changes things, Fuzzy. What do we do? There's only one thing we can do. I'll pick off that masked man that's moving the shed, and you shoot the sheriff. Uh, let me get that mask. You'll do as I say. Now we'll get closer so we don't miss. We can finish off the Indian between us. Come on, but keep low. Clayton Fuzzy drew back the hammers of their guns and held them in readiness as they crept closer to the men they hoped to kill. They were determined to make the first shots count and give the masked man and the sheriff no chance to return the fire. In the meantime, the Lone Ranger and Tonto heard the sound of approaching hoofs, but their vision was obscured by clouds of smoke Smoke will clear away in just a second, Toto. It's clear a minute ago. It's thinning out. <coughs> Horsemen over there, that way. Yes, I know. Now we see him. Toto, isn't that man wearing a badge on his vest? <coughs> it looks like badge. Yes, it is. He's the sheriff. That right. Come on, we'll go and meet him. Hello there. <coughs> Hello there, Sheriff. Who said that? Oh, there you are. I should be you wearing a mask. Yes, that's right. Did you start that fire? No, Toto and I have been fighting the fire. Fight the fire? Yes, we pulled down the gear sheds and branding chutes so it couldn't spread to the house. The barn is gone. Well, the old barn was about ready to fall in anyway. But now account for yourself. What started the fire? Well, Sheriff, we could smell kerosene when we rode up. Yep, that's what I figured. Somebody's trying to run the Freemans off the place. That's silver. Hit the ground, both of you. Somebody shoot Sheriff. Get him into the house, Toto. I'll cover you. The curtain falls on the first act of our Lone Ranger story. Before the next exciting scenes, please permit us to pause for just a few moments.
Now, to continue our story. As the Lone Ranger's guns went into action, he was handicapped by the smoke that filled the air. And being unable to see his adversaries, he was only able to fire in the direction from which the shots had come. Also, he faced two alternatives. He could dash through the smoke and run the risk of being ambushed, or he could pretend to give up the fight and pick up the trail of the gunman later. Discretion told him to take the latter course. And he soon joined Tonto, who was caring for the sheriff. Where was he hit, Tonto? The wound on head, Kimisabi. Here, let me see. Hmm. Fortunately, the bullet didn't penetrate the skull. Maybe skull fractured. Oh, it's possible. He needs a doctor at once. Oh. Uh, me go to town, get doctor. You're not going anywhere. Get your hands up, both of you. Uh, uh, Walt! It's the sheriff that killed him. Get him up and stand up straight. You murderer. Susie says, Tom. Oh, me do it. All right, back up against that wall, Indian. <laughs> hey, I'll take that gun. What? There. All right. And I'd suggest you never take your eyes off one man while you're covering another. No, don't. Don't kill my husband. I'm not going to, Mrs. Freeman. What? I'm here to help you. You know our name? Yes. Now, the sheriff's not dead, but he's badly hit. Just how seriously, I don't know. You should know. You did it. I haven't time to argue with you, Freeman. Time means everything right now. Kimasabi. Yes, Tonto. Through window. Many men ride this way. Cut out the stalling. It's your gang riding in here. That's who it is. I have no gang. Those men are your neighbors. They've been attracted by the fire that destroyed your barn. Well, if they're neighbors, you'd better clear out. I agree with you on that, Mrs. Freeman. Have someone ride into town for the doctor. Come, Tonto. Uh, we hurry, Kimasabi. Then ride fast. They'll run you down and kill you. Hurry, Tonto. Uh... In the meantime, Clayton and Fuzzy were fleeing for their lives. They heeled their horses viciously and leaned low, riding hard without a backward glance to get as far as possible from the scene of the attempted murders. Then they straightened and changed to a slower slow pace slow until they thought they were safe. Then Clayton raised his hand to signal a halt. Oh, oh, oh. They were at the top of a slight rise, and far behind them lay the ranch where fire had struck. Oh, steady. <laughs> I don't see anyone following us. Do you, Clayt? Yeah, no. We better be ready for some more gunplay. From here, we can drill anyone who comes this way. I doubt that. You what? I figured you was a pretty fair shot. I am. Well, you sure missed an easy target when you missed that mask, man. That wasn't my fault. I suppose I'm to blame for your missing. You know blame well what happened, Fuzzy. I had a dead beat on that mask, man. I'd have clipped him right between the eyes, but... Just as I tightened down on the trigger, that doggone white horse had to go and nicker a warning. Hmm. Well, don't look at me like that, Fuzzy. That masked man moved like grease lightning. I'm telling you, he dodged while my bullet was in the air. Sure, sure. But the horse didn't bother me none. I reckon you saw the sheriff fall. Yeah, I wish you'd been aiming at the masked man instead of the sheriff. I told you to let me get that masked man. But you wouldn't pay no attention to me. I could have... Hey, Fuzzy. Wait a minute. Now What? Look down yonder. Look at all those horsemen riding into the ranch. Yeah. Who are they? They're ranchers from around here. Must have seen the smoke. And it gives me an idea, Fuzzy. Yeah? We'll ride in with them. Claim we saw the smoke and came to find out about it. What about the mask man? He's back there. In the first place, he never got a good look at us. You know that. Oh, yeah. And it's my guess he won't be hanging around long if he sees them men riding in. Yeah, come on. Let's join them. We'll have a perfect alibi. Get up. Get up. Get up. Forced to leave hurriedly, the Lone Ranger and Tonto had no opportunity to pick up the trail of Clayt Bixby and Fuzzy Foster. And they pressed their mounts rapidly toward the low hills to the north keeping to difficult terrain in order to throw off a posse the masked man felt would soon follow. Finally, as they emerged into a small valley, Tonto pointed to the soft sod and they drew rain. Oh, 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 oh. There. That tracks of horses, Kimasabi. Yes. 
Some of them new and some old. Isn't that right? Old tracks made last night. New tracks made today. After sun come up. They lead to and found that line rider's hut at the end of the valley. Isn't that right? I think we'd better investigate that hut tunnel. Let's go. Come on, Silver. Get him up, Scout. Clay Bixby's men were seated about a table playing cards, awaiting the return of their leader and Fuzzy Foster. Yeah. It seems like Clayton and Fuzzy are sure taking their time about setting them ranch buildings afire. Yeah. They should have been back long before this. Hope they didn't run into trouble. Yeah. yeah maybe one of us ought to saddle up and ride that way just in case. Well, good idea. I'll go. Stay where you are. Hey, the mask man. Who in thunder? Don't make a move if you want to stay healthy. Get your hands up. There's an Indian. Hello, take your guns. Uh, make your guns. Now we'll find out what they're doing here. The outlaws, taken completely by surprise, had no alternative but to surrender and answer questions. Meanwhile, at the Bar T Ranch, Fuzzy Foster and Clayt Bixby had joined the group of ranchers and cowhands. They stood by as Walt Freeman and his wife told of the dagger that had been thrown at their door, how they had brought the sheriff to the ranch, and how they had seen their outbuildings burning as they returned home. The sheriff rode on ahead, and Stella and I followed in the buckboard. But I saw him ride up and dismount. Then out of the smoke, I saw the masked man, an Indian, walk up to him. But the wind whipped the smoke around, and we didn't exactly see what happened. But we heard a lot of shooting. By the time we rode up to the ranch house, there was no one in sight. But there were three horses there. One was the sheriff's. Anyway, I'd bought a gun in town. Uh, that gun on the floor there. We came inside, and there they were. The Indian and the masked man bending over the sheriff. Then Walt covered them with the gun, but the masked man managed to overpower him. You know the rest. Well, I'll tell you something. Who are you? What ranch are you from? Well, me and my friend are just sort of drifters looking for a job. We rode by about an hour ago, and we saw them owl hoots south of here. They ducked to cover before we could get up to them. Reckon you could pick up the trail where you saw them, Missy? I got an idea we could. You remember where it was, don't you, Fuzzy? Why, sure. South of here, about a mile. Bill should be back with Dog Hunter pretty soon. Let's take out after them two curtains. That's a good idea. idea. I'll stay and take care of the sheriff until the doctor gets here. He should be here soon, Stella. I'd better go along with the men. Yes, you go right ahead, Walt. Here's someone riding up now. Maybe that's Bill and Dog Hunter. I'll see. Hey, look. Yeah, yeah where is it? It's him. Well, he's alone. The Indian's not with him. You mean that's the critter who shot the sheriff? Sure, that's him. Give me my gun. Where are you of all the calls? Come on, men, outside. And keep the car. Right, right with you. Oh, easy. Steady, big fella. Get him up. You're covered. Let's lynch him. I'll get a rope. Just a minute, you two. This is my ranch. I don't do things that way. Out west, we string up murder in owl hoots. You bet we do. Where I come from, back east, we do things by law. And we'll do it the same way by law. I'm the boss here. Yeah, it be All right, mister. Just what have you got to say for yourself? But I know who shot the sheriff. <laughs> so do we. You and that Indian did it. Oh, no, you're wrong, Freeman. I can prove it. Those two men right there shot the sheriff. What? What? You talking about me? Yes, Clayt Bixby. You and your friend, Fuzzy Foster. Why, you don't. No, dirty. you don't. Put that gun away. No, let me plug it. Put it away, I said. Now, what makes you think they shot the sheriff, mister? Well, as you know, Freeman, someone's trying to run you off your ranch. <laughs> There's no doubt of that. Go on. Those two men are leaders of a band of outlaws. They've been using your ranch as a base of operations. My Indian friend Toto and I have just rounded up the other members of the band. Toto's guarding them now. You'll have to prove that, mister. Well, that's easy. I came here to get your help to take them to jail. You'll also find plenty of their loot in the line hut. Uh, Freeman, how's the sheriff? Walt, oh, Walt. What is it, Stella? The sheriff, he's conscious now. He's asking for the masked man. Oh, he is, huh? And I guess he knows who shot him. Mister, it looks like your lying won't do you no good. No, it won't. I'll bet he wants to identify you as the one who did it. Sure. But, Walt, that's not what the sheriff Never mind, did never mind, Mrs. Freeman. I'll face the sheriff. All right, come on inside. And remember, you're covered. Grab those two men. They're trying to get away. Hey, come back here. Grab them. Don't let them get away. We've got them. Now, bring them along. Come on, let's go. I 
I'll lift him up so he can see better. I'll help you, honey. There. All right, Sheriff. Take a look at this mass man. Is he the one who shot you? No, no. He didn't shoot me. He didn't. He's on our side, the side of the law. He left a bullet in my pocket so I'd know who he is. And who is he? He's he's the Lone Ranger. What? That's what I was trying to tell you, Walt. The masked man is the best friend the ranchers have. <laughs> It was after sundown when Walt Freeman returned to the ranch house to find Stella had supper ready and waiting for him. He had gone with the other men to the line shack and had helped to get the prisoners and their loot off his property. And the Lone Ranger and Tonto had ridden most of the way back to the ranch with him. After he had told Stella all about it, she said, It's wonderful, Walt, when you think what good neighbors we have after all. That's what the masked man said, Stella. He said we could always depend on him, come good times or bad. It's nice to know that here we just moved in as complete strangers, and and yet we've made so many friends. Uh, that's right, honey. But as the sheriff says, the Lone Ranger's the best friend anybody ever had. Yes. Yes, Walt. I believe that. This is a feature of The Lone Ranger Incorporated, created and produced by George W. Trendle, directed by Charles D. Livingston, and edited by Fran Stryker. The part of The Lone Ranger is played by Brace Beamer.